In this video, I'm gonna replace the stock suspension on my Ridstar Q20 with this upgraded, fully adjustable air suspension. Both the front fork and rear shock are air, and you'll need this shock pump to be able to adjust the pressure to your desired riding conditions. A link to all these products is above and also in the description. So let's get started on the install. I have the Ridstar Q20 flipped over so that I can access the suspension and change it out easily. I put a towel down to protect the components on the handlebars and I'm going to get started. I'm going to first start with the back shock. I'm going to take these white pieces off that look like pegboard. I think I'm going to paint them black and I have a really easy way of installing the front air fork without having to take too much of the front end apart. You're going to need a four millimeter hex to remove the three bolts. You do the same for the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and paint these to match the black for the bike, but it does give me access to the shocks. Use the five millimeter hex here, and then one on this side, and then you're going to loosen one side. One side is a screw, the other side is a sleeved. I'm going to use this hex key to push the sleeve out. You can see this here, but you want to just take note that the rear trailing arm will slide down. So you may have to jiggle the rear trailing arm up and down a little bit. There you can see the shock falls out. You can set the trailing arm down for the meantime. I'm going to do the same over here. Push that out pretty easily. Here is the old shock. This is the new one. It's a 165 millimeter. This one is fully adjustable air chambers so that you can dial in for based on the rider's weight and riding condition. This one is kind of a fixed shock. It's set probably at 750 pounds and there really is no adjustment and it's pretty firm. So I'm going to get um, taking these bolts off and installing it in the reverse order I did this shock. Now I found something out. I installed the shock in this direction and when I brought it up, this portion of the cylinder interfered with the support. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert this and I'm gonna put the nozzle up like this and that should definitely be, that should definitely clear the mount and the clevis. So I'm gonna install that. Now I'm going to lift up the rear trailing, get that in position, then might have to move this around a little bit. This is where a friend might help. There we go, not too bad. And then put the screw in on this side and then I'm going to tighten it down. All right, the rear shock is installed. When I flip the bike over, that's when I'm gonna adjust the air pressure. I'm gonna move on to the front wheel. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the headlight from the front fork. I'm going to unclip the wire harness here. And then what I'm going to do is, it's a Phillips head on one side and a 10 millimeter on the other. And I'm going to loosen this up and remove it from the front fork. There we have it. I'm just gonna set it aside. To remove the front wheel, I need two 15 millimeter sockets or wrenches. And then I'm going to loosen this up. Simply remove the tire. I'm gonna set this aside. Now I'm going to move over here to remove the brake. Remove the support piece. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the brake over here. And now I'm going to go back to five millimeter and remove the front fender. I'm going to set that aside. I've come up with a creative way to remove the fork from the bike without having to remove the steering stem and the handlebars. What I'm gonna simply do is remove the shock, retain the upper and lower crowns on the bike, 
remove the shock and put the new ones in. Now this only works because this is 32 millimeters and the shock that I spec'd out was 32 millimeters. I did order some other shocks one time and they were 34 millimeters. And then I really had to take this all apart and then add a handlebar extender because these crowns with the steering tube have these unique spacers. So it's a taller steering tube than you typically get on any aftermarket shock. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen all these bolts here. There's four of them. And then I'm gonna slide out the factory shock and then I'll slide in the new one. Pretty easy to remove then. What You can see that. What you wanna do is slide off these rubber bumpers and you wanna to remember to reinstall those when you remove it. All right. The factory shock is out. It's pretty heavy compared to the aftermarket one. These are oil filled and not very adjustable. Okay, I have my new fork here. I'm gonna remove the crowns on either side of this. There you can see I removed the one crown and then the next one. I'm gonna remove the rubber stoppers too or the bumpers. Pull that up, slide this crown out. All right, so I got a little dish soap here. Spray it here on this. So it acts like a lubricant. I'm also gonna put a little bit on the forks here so it doesn't leave a mark when I slide the new one in. Uh, one thing to take note, you wanna make sure that you have your rubber bumpers lined up. So when you slide it in, that you're good to go. All right. Obviously make sure it's facing towards the front and then should be easy peasy slide right in. I'm gonna slide the rubber bumpers up so I'm not fighting them and I can see. Slide those on. and then slide it through the upper crown. What you wanna do is make sure that they are lined up and then tighten it down. And you're gonna to wanna to really kinda of crank on these because if you don't tighten them up too much, you may notice after riding that one of these might slide through the crown slightly and be elevated. So just keep an eye on it for your first couple of rides. But once you get it tightened securely enough, then you won't need to adjust that. Tighten the lower crown here. It's really looking good because everything is black, unlike the stock one, which had silver. So it's really gonna be nice and blacked out. Get my rubber bumpers turned the right way. Okay, now I'm gonna reinstall the headlight. I like to make sure the wires are inside the headlight mount. It just looks a little bit cleaner. Make sure my rubber pads are aligned on here. Reinstall the bracket with the mounting hardware. Reconnect the headlamp. You're going to line up the arrows. All right, reinstall the fender like it was before. Slides right on pretty easily. And then you have this nice long bolt that goes through the top of the shock. Like that. And then secure the other side. All right, I'm gonna install the tire. Simply slide it into the fork, slide it in. Looks like it was hitting the fender before. It's just gonna adjust that down. Like I said, might need to adjust the fender afterwards, but it fits in there nice. And now I'm gonna reinstall 
my hardware what you're gonna do is put the serrated washer on there then the little tab washer goes into the slot and the same thing on the other side we're gonna slide on the 15 millimeter nuts and secure this down all right in order to secure the brake I'm gonna reinstall it with how I had it and then the bracket to get it to be secured on here just gonna put this on here finger tight what I'm gonna do is I'm going to depress the brake so it aligns on the rotor and then tighten this down I'm gonna lightly depress the brake and then tighten the brake down so now it's aligned on the rotor all right after I got this installed I didn't like the look of the cable on the outside so I moved it around and put it on the inside looks much better the last thing I'm gonna do is reinstall these covers under the seat now I painted them black they should look a lot better on the frame than before with the three millimeter bolts oh yeah looks much better blacked out no more white and then this then the front fork got rid of the silver it's all black now that I got the bike flipped over I'm gonna adjust the air pressure you need a shock pump like this and then I'm gonna simply remove these cap on the left side and you're gonna see that there is the Preston pressure port and you're gonna thread the shock pump on to that and then take a reading the last one I got was at 200 psi this one's sitting about 130 um, it feels pretty good for my riding weight and conditions I like to do a mixture of on-road and off-road I'm gonna leave it at about 130 maybe take a little bit out down to 120 it's very subtle then reinstall the cap and then I'm gonna go to the rear shock all right to adjust the rear shock I'm gonna unthread the cap for the bottom cylinder I'm gonna thread on the shock pump now that's at 120 so on my last bike I put it down to about 90 so I get proper dampening so I'm bringing it down to about 90 that's for me I weigh about 170 pounds all right let's check it still seems pretty stiff so I'm gonna take some air out of the top cylinder now that is a little bit of a challenge being that it's up in here but it's doable I probably should have adjusted this before I put the new side covers on but I think I can get it in there yeah it might actually be easier to come from the front it threads on no problem okay this top cylinder is at a hundred so I'm gonna bring this down unthread that let's take a look with it on Oh yeah the shocks don't recoil like the old ones do so I'm pretty happy with that I'm gonna go out for a test ride and then adjust the pressure up and down so I've taken the bike off road for a few miles and I got the shocks dialed in both front and back it's a much better ride the recoil is much more controlled than the oil filled fork both front and rear I'm happy with these results I hope that you like this video subscribe to my channel if you have any questions please leave it in the comments thanks for watching